good today this or this morning's a rest day in terms of gym i'm gonna go running to later on today i'm gonna do hopefully gonna do three miles the plan was to do the plan to the plan this week was to do five miles a day monday to friday but i don't think i'll be able to handle it like in terms of you know endurance wise so i think i'm gonna start off small and do five miles on the monday which i did yesterday and then do five miles on a friday because usually as i said before i like to do two workouts on the monday and friday to kind of like um start my week off strong and to end it strong but then I think from today onwards, from Tuesday to Thursday, I'm going to do three miles each after work. So that'll probably be the way that I'll kind of schedule my things, just to kind of keep myself fresh for when I have the five mile run on Friday. Again, these are not full blast runs. I'm not fucking... Because before I used to run really fast training-wise because, I don't know, just because I thought I was in a race, which I'm not. It's good to run. I think I've learned that from the um, um, Kipchoge interviews since he kind of broke the marathon record um that i think he says a lot in his interviews prior that he tries to train he doesn't train like he races like he trains i think to 80 percent max capacity sometimes 70 60 so that when it comes to race that you have something in your tank left over um i think that's quite good again i think psychologically too is quite good too when you know you're running at eight percent of your pace but then you see somebody else absolutely killing themselves so you know you've got an extra little 20 percent left in the tank when if need be um and again you know usually in my experience usually race days you tend to run quicker than you've ever done in training anyway so there's no need to go full blast helter skelter um you know pushing it to the edge in training when you know you're going to turn up into a race and you're gonna you know you're gonna possibly due to the kind of you know excitement and the endorphins running through your body and everyone just around you doing their best too it's going to raise your game so there's no point of going extra balls to the wall during your training session i would assume so that's what I'm going to do now and that's what I've been doing currently. And I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty strong. I've swapped out my shoes at the moment. Um, I've got these. I've got to buy some new... Um, I've got to buy... Um, what are they called? Um, um, not Hoka. It's pronounced Hoki. How's it, how's it pronounced? Oki, right? Is it Oki? Okiana or something? I've, uh, anyway, how is it pronounced? I've got to get a new pair of... Um, I've got to get a pair of Hoka One Ones, which I don't have a pair of actually. Um, I've been wearing my new balances at the moment, which I kind of, you know, um, seen better days. So I've got to get rid of those. So I've kind of swapped them out Instead of wearing these sketches that I've had for a while. I'm not sure what they're called, what model it is. Probably doesn't matter what model it is, but I think I picked this up from I don't know. I'm gonna say I got these from Sports Direct or something. Like they're, they're just the cheapest shoe that was available at the time. So I, I I was wearing them for a while, then I stopped because the insole is made out of this weird sort of like velvety sort of material. So that when I was running, um, my heel would slip out the back, no matter how no matter how much I tied it in a forefoot, my heel kept on slipping out, which kind of made me think, you know, of how impressive some of the newer sneakers are, where they normally have a little bit more of a, your, the heel sort of like pops out a bit more, so your heel proper sinks into the back of the, the back of the heel cup. So what I had to do in order to make it fit so it didn't slip off my shoe, is I had to kind of cut the velvet stuff out of the back heel here, as you can see. I've kind of taken the velvet stuff out of there, right? So that when I put my foot in, my foot kind of scrapes along the back of it. But obviously the other problem about it is that now I have a whole full, I have a whole hill full of hill. I have a whole hill full of foam since I've been using that. But it's the only way I got it to work. So that's what I'm going to do at the moment. Um, so I've been wearing these sketches so far for my long runs because they're a bit softer. They've got a bit more of a, you know, thicker, thicker sole on them. So that kind of helps with the running. Usually I try and run on my forefoot anyway, as you can see with the tread. I like seeing my my patterns of my running. You can see here that most of my tread at the front is what's kind of been worn out. So that's quite a good sign to see that, you know, I'm actually running the right way on the balls of my feet. But yeah, I need to get a new pair of Hoka 1-1s. Um, I've seen quite a few options actually out available at the moment. They go for quite a lot as well, second-hand ones on eBay. So I think they're, they're pretty um, well-regarded brand amongst the endurance or amongst the you know, um, marathon runners or 5K runners out there at the moment, probably because it's got a fixed sole. So people that have, you know, um, plans of fresh eyes probably tend to use them quite often. But I like just the look of them in general. I probably should go for more of a minimalist shoe. But what I tried to do, I think I did that last time when I had my undercover Nikes, is that I tried to have a minimalist shoe, something with like a zero drop for a race day. I think it's quite cool to kind of come into a race day wearing, you know, the finished shoe you can possible in order to kind of make sure you kind of get a good a good run time and just to kind of get you back into good habits. And then during my training, because training is like a continuous thing you're doing week in, week out, I tried to wear a, so a shoe that has more of a thicker sole just for the cushioning and just to kind of make sure your feet don't get fucked up. And it kind of allows you some room for error. You can fuck around and maybe once you're getting tired, start to heel strike a little bit, start to run a bit flat footed. But you can't necessarily do that with a zero drop shoe, right? You feel every single pebble and every single nook or cranny of the road. But that's my current 
running or race equipment schedule at the moment. I've got quite good race equipment at the moment. I think I've there was a period of time where I used to just wear shitty things. Now I've kind of bought you know some tights. I bought some compression tops. Um, I've got some compression socks. I've got some compression um, five things. I've got some arm compression armbands. I've got headbands. I've got running tops. I've got loads of stuff. Actual equipment. The only thing I'm missing now is the shoes, which I tend to do quite often. You know, I'm sure other people are like that where you tend to. There was a period of time where I had loads of jackets and not enough clothes, right? So I had loads of jackets, but not enough shirts, not enough t-shirts, long sleeves, jeans, whatever. And then now I've got way too many jeans, not enough jackets. You know what I mean? It's, you, you end up in this weird predicament, which is probably why people tend to usually buy um, outfits and then try and buy things that work within the same outfit. So if you're going to buy like a trench coat, a turtleneck and a pair of trousers, you then maybe buy a couple of other tops that also go well with the long trench coat. A couple of other trousers that go well with that kind of jumper. So you have things to interlock with it. Because then when you start buying just outfits, you tend to not have a lot in your wardrobe because you tend to just kind of exhaust that one option, move on to the next, exhaust that, move on to the next, exhaust that, until you get to a point where you know it gets a bit crazy. But, you know, what can you do? We get there bit by bit. Um, That's about it for me training-wise.